Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Chunk of Rose. I'm Sam Riley. And I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. Yeah, so um, today, uh, before we get started, I'd like to do a shout out to uh, carsofevilise.com. Um, they are now, uh, for a while, they've been <laughs> they've been Zach and I's sponsor for events. They are now the official sponsor of the Choco Bros podcast. Um, so they sell anything from singles uh, to sleeves, play mats, all kinds of special things. I think this Friday night uh, is when you can go online and you can get the cool the Minfilia sleeves, uh, the Final Fantasy VI sleeves, um, the ones with like the the Terra the the bot. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, he said that everything should be up uh, by the end of Friday. Um, right. He's actually taking like the entire night Thursday to get everything inventoried and documented and stuff for that. So. Right, right, and I can tell you too from from experience, um, their singles are some of the best prices around. In fact, probably yeah. just the best price around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's get started. Uh, so first, we're going to start with uh, the most recent event, which is really important to us, is the SoCal uh, Crystal Cup. Right. Yeah. Uh, so Cody, you have you have the, the names of the four the four. I want to say the four winners. Um, there was, I guess, eight winners, right? Because top eight gets pricing. Is that how it works at the Crystal Probably, Cup? Probably, yeah. That's but how it works at uh, Kansas. But the four winner, the top four, they get the invites, which is the most important thing. Right. So, right. so let's let's talk about them for a little bit. Okay, so uh, the top four uh, in first place, we had Joshua Medeiros. I probably butchered that last name. Medeiros. Um, yeah. He was on Ice Lightning. Uh, in second place, we had Alejandro Ramirez. He was on Mono Ice. In third place, we had Sharina is it Decano, Wind Earth. And then we had Kyle McGintney on uh, Mono Ice, wrapping it up. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> and I had talked to Kyle a lot before going into this event. Um, I know that he was like pretty big on the science plan as well. as uh, well, He's the one who told me about it. And I decided to test it at our locals. Um, and I just thought it was insane. And so I sent him back the report. Hey, this deck is insane. You should play this deck. And yeah. then uh, I, I guess they started thinking like uh, they want to go with something a little bit more safe. Um, mm-hmm. And I have to say that that worked out for him, right? Yeah. I mean, um, top boring. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Although although his list was, uh, Kyle's list was rather, what would you say, like uninspiring? It was, it was a lot like Cody's list, right? <laughs> Just very, very, nothing wrong with that. Just very much like to the point. Um, it wasn't the turbo discard list, uh, which we'd begin to see. Um, mm-hmm. But it, 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 what did it end up losing to? It lost to the mirror match. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he lost the mirror match in top four against Alejandro. Right. Which if I'm understanding, if I'm understanding right, um, he ended up taking the, if I remember right, he took the play um, and all through testing and all throughout the top, the top cut he was taking the draw in the mirror match um and he decided to take the play here and then i think in game three from my understanding he opened up with like the nut draw hand which is like double discard plus sarah um Mm -hmm. and so apparently apparently that ended up punishing him um which is too bad but still he earned his qualification which is awesome right that's the that's the important part right i mean that's that that is all that matters in my opinion yeah um, and then, so the, their structure, right, was for those of you that don't know, was a top top sixteen of pod A and top sixteen of pod B, and then yep. those people battled all the way down to the finals. Which was basically instead of day twoing, you actually day threed. So if you hit that top sixteen, right, uh, you go, you'd skip a day and you'd wait for the second group to play, and then the other group played. They got a top sixteen, and then each day was on a separate side of the bracket. Yep. So it was actually the top two, basically, from each day met in the middle. Met in the middle, to right. To make the top four. Which was really interesting to me, um, because for a lot of reasons that we point out in the in the older podcast, but I, I, I'm i struggling to understand, like, if, and that maybe it doesn't matter, but what was the difficulty of this, this cup, Crystal Cup? Was it harder? Or was it easier than the previous Crystal Cups? What are your guys' thoughts on it? Um, I think it was... I wouldn't say it was necessarily easier. I think it might have been easier to make top cut, uh, but I don't think any of it would have been easier. Right. Of course, it's I not easy because you have the California. You're playing against all these people that are play all the time, right? Right. And I, I mean, mean it, at the end of the day, you still got to make top four. So. Yeah, right. and it, I think it actually, it, it's both. I think I think it's a lot easier to make your day three, like your top cut after the first day, but it's way harder to actually qualify. So because... why is it why is it easier? Because let's say you're pod B, 
And we're just going to assume. So pod A, you actually only have to play six rounds. Uh, pod B, you had to play seven rounds. And then you cut to top 16, just like we did. Yep. And then so you I have... was going to say, because it's purely oh. statistics, because if they, they were cut to top 16 regardless of population, I believe. And since okay. it's across two days... Um, so we had 91 at the Kansas, right? Okay. Uh, so we had our, what was seven rounds? I think. Yeah. Seven rounds. Uh, they, whether or not they had six or seven, um, they had less total people so that the tiebreakers would go further down the roster. So you, your record didn't have to be as like pristine to, um, cut, like you didn't sweat it quite as much because what first day they had 50 something people and day two, they had like 70 or something like that. Um, so when you combine, like, if you split across, that ends up doing 32 people across. I think across. it was actually 15 and 81 or something like that. Oh, was it 81? Yeah. Okay, so second day was about the same then. Um, but then to qualify, you have to make top two of your day, right? Oh. So oh, Okay, so so that's where it's different, too, is that instead of making top four, you have to make top two. Top two, and it's, essentially, it's the same bracket, right? And then you're just against another tournament right. of people, which is strange in and of itself. We talk about this a lot, but... yeah. Uh, so yeah, I definitely think it's it might have been easier to top, uh, just because less population up each day, but way harder to qualify because right. you have to win that extra uh, round. So, right, and then <clears throat> I guess it also just depends on the strength of your opponents, right? So, in a see, it makes me wonder because in so California, they're actually known for a lot of their playing, uh, like they play a lot, um, right doesn't necessarily make them very good at the game, but it, it, it increases the chance that they are better at the game than most other yeah, regions. Yeah, I think, I think their population is generally mm-hmm. very strong at the game. So Right, but, but what I'm saying is, I also think that the sheer number of people that enter changes things. So, for example, because they have such a high population, you're going to have a lot of locals playing in the event that are just maybe sure. the, your more casual um, players. Whereas, like, the, the players that played in Kansas, right, were a lot of the what I felt like the grinders. Like, we played oh, against yep. people from right. Minnesota. We played against people from Iowa. We played against people from North Carolina, Atlanta, California, mm-hmm. Seattle. Like everyone f- tr- flew in for that. <clears throat> I maybe I think the only time I played against a local local, like from the Kansas area, was in the finals. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I think <clears throat> I played against. Yeah, I actually don't know that I played against anybody from Kansas until actually no, I played against uh, one of the other guys at top four, the Windwater. Um, okay. Kyle. Yeah. Kyle. Yeah. And then you also played Aaron round one. Actually. Oh, right. Duh. Aaron round yeah. one. Yeah. I, 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 Sorry, I, I repressed that memory. That was. <laughs> <laughs> he did pretty good. I so, think. <laughs> and so that that's what I'm trying to say is I think that I I wonder what the strength of the opponents was uh, at least was for that event. Um, and so it's just an interesting dynamic. I, I so right. like for example like if I were to go to Gen Con, I'd wonder what the strength of entering day the first day was versus the second day. Um, if you think that you're going to break the format, <clears throat> and, and this is maybe just some general advice, uh, I'm not going to Gen Con, and if I do go to Gen Con, I'm certainly not playing Gen Con. I'm 100 percent committed to that. But if I were playing and I thought that I was going to break the format, in other words, I thought that I had the best deck in the room and it wasn't close, I would 100 percent be playing on day one. Right. Um, yes, people are going to be able to copy you on, on day two, but they're not going to be able to also copy other people's great decks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you think that you want to play something, but you haven't had the time to test to see what the good Opus 6 decks are, one, you shouldn't be going to Gen Con because that's a really heck of a long way to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> but if you manage to, you really want to qualify and you just didn't have the time to test, show up on day one, uh, you know, bird dog these guys and, and find out what they're playing. <laughs> Um, that that's what I would do. So if I just didn't have time to test, I'd be playing at day two. If I did have time to test, I'd be playing at day one. However, right. in California, we saw and and this is this is uh no slight to anyone playing in the first pod. In fact, it may have been smarter. I saw most of the well known players playing in the second pod, the Saturday pod. Whether that's because Friday was a work day, um, I don't know. Um, or maybe just you know we had like some of the the grinders that weren't necessarily from California, like Josh Gardner, decided to play in the first pod. I wonder if he kind of knew, like, hey, some of the better players will be playing in pod two. I have the advantage in playing in the first pod. What do you guys think about right. that, that setup, that mind game? Um, I don't like that it exists because of, like, the split days, but I get it. Like, if it's there, it is, it's relevant, right? Um, 
I don't know which is more beneficial, right? Because you have to have the information. You have to know for like a hundred percent fact when these people are playing day one or day two. And I think that's hard to really put a uh, like put your finger on to actually have that <clears throat> nailed down. Yeah, unless you, unless um, you're play unless you're unless you're play. You know, actually, now I'm thinking about that. You know, we talked about if we were going to Gen Con that mm-hmm. we'd want to play on the same day, so that we could hang out and do things. Uh, non Final Fantasy related on the other days, right? Right. However, Kyle and Akimoto, who are obviously Meta Potion partners, played on the same day. Mm-hmm. And while I think about, I'm wondering if it's one of two factors: one, they just wanted to hang out and play the, the card, card games at the same day, or two, right. they're hoping at some point Oki would be able to block for Kyle. Maybe. It's, inter- it's an interesting thought. I mean. The world may never know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we could just ask them. But if it's Maybe some sort of good, yeah. if, if there's some sort of strategic advantage, I imagine that there's no reason for them to divulge that information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, what do you think about all that, Cody? Uh, I really, I don't know. I'm kind of, it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of up in the air. I'd like to see the format just be straight across the board for all the Crystal Cups. Uh, but I understand like sizing, like the store couldn't hold all the players at once and all that stuff. So I understand why they had to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I would prefer it just to be like straight across the board for all seven crystal cups. I suppose if anything was not, so people can't talk about it or like make excuses or like have like this kind of discussion where we're kind of criticizing like the differences here and there, like they could just have, you know, one format for it. And then everybody it's either we accept it or we don't, whether or not it's, you know, the two day thing or one day thing. Uh, so that it leaves less room for criticism, I think. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> like, yes, but that could be beneficial. But there's no reason to have a separate two events for smaller events, right? So, like for Boston, they certainly didn't need to rent out a Friday, right, Saturday, right. Sunday. Yeah. Um, and maybe they needed to for California. So obviously, I don't think they can go to like one format. Um, yeah. But it is interesting. So I think what I would have rather saw maybe was two Crystal Cups. Maybe. Like, if they yeah. have enough players. And maybe that's the thing. Maybe they should have like a a, a a cap. And if they reach that cap, they're like, well, we're going to divide into two crystal cups. I was going to say, maybe they could do uh, per attendance. The attendance could decide the number of qualifications. How many? Yeah. How many yeah. qualifying spots there are. So if they're at like 130 players or yeah. whatever that bracket up is, they could go down to the top eight or like top. I mean, six would be kind of awkward because then it's right. entirely. And, and certainly there is. This is us just making it up on the fly, you know, like right, there's, right. there would be people who would say, well, here are the problems with all that. So obviously I'm sure that Square yeah. Enix has sat down and thought about this, um, whether or not they did it perfectly. Who knows? I thought they did a good job. Um, right. But yeah, it's just it's just an interesting dynamic um, mm-hmm. and almost kind of mind game, which I know we've already covered. But but just do, after seeing it played out, it's even far more interesting to me. Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, so we'll move on. So speaking of qualifications. <laughs> Uh, the other way to qualify for nationals is to play in a local qualifier and come in first place. Uh, so we looked at a couple of the uh, results for that, right? Uh, yeah. So um, first two qualifiers, uh, obviously, I I won my one here in St. Louis with Mono Ice, uh, and then at your guys, you had Alfred. Yep. He was piloting Mono Light, your Mono Lightning, actually. Well, yes and no. Oh. It, it was Josh Guz list. And then oh, I cha- okay. I change some things as I always. Josh always says not to change things, and I always <laughs> I always change things. So, it's just it's just right. my habit. But yeah. And then um, after that, we had Paul Go in New York. He won with Fire Ice. Uh, I think that was the. It had Moogles, a lot of Moogles in there as well. Yeah. Uh, we had Andrew Pierce. He won Washington with Ice Wind. And then we had Brandon Harding. He got Texas with Mono Ice. We still don't know the Minnesota winner. Um, so if, if that person would like to come forward, leave a comment down below. Uh, we'd like to take a look at your deck list. Uh, yeah, real first placer, please stand up. <laughs> hey, no spoilers for our, our rap, our raps that are coming out. All right. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm hearing what I'm what I'm hearing you say, Cody, is a lot of ice. <laughs> yeah yeah so ice was a really good candidate to take in and if you if you plan on winning and you plan on beating ice but won't play it maybe just take lightning or take ice lightning 
Now I'm curious. I man, I wish I could see that ice wind list. I know we reached out to that player, right? But he never uh, got back to us about it. Uh, I can pull it up. Hold on. Oh, yeah, you actually yeah, oh, you yeah. have the list now. Yeah. So we'll definitely we'll link you guys that list um, in the comment section if these guys will remind me. Because we've seen a lot of fire mm -hmm. ice, and it's yeah. probably a more aggressive build with like Gadot and stuff like that. Uh, so oh, I'd be wait. curious to see. I thought you meant the I think meant ice wind. I'm sorry. I don't have that list. Uh, oh yeah. I have the ice wind. I don't have the ice fire. Oh, yes. no, 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 the, no, no. I the ice, ice fire, fire list. I do oh. want to see the ice wind. So the ice fire list had three Vaughn, had three Gadot, yeah. three Sage. Oh, that's right. It was super haste, yeah. Three, three goblins. goblins, yeah. yeah. Um, it was like that super haste uh, deck, uh, which was and, cool. And what was the ice wind one like? You said you did have that one? Yeah, it was a... Uh, I mean, I've never seen a build anything like this. It played uh, a little bit of everything. It played Adele. It played Legendary Renoa. It played White Tiger LC. Um, oh, okay. They played yeah, Capricious it Reaper, Zed, mm -hmm. uh, Opus 1, uh, Kuja, the 5 drop. Okay, so. Also, oh, it's taxes. That's it sweet. used to be a deck at the very end of Opus 3, and it. I'm trying to because we played it to count. What did we play it to counter? I think we played it to counter. Ironically, I think we played that deck to counter Modern Water. Because I ended up playing the deck quite a bit too. Um, obviously, it didn't have Zed in it, um, but it had the, the 5 drop, um, Kuja. Um, it also played Delita back then too. Yeah, I think uh, back then Delita. it was an Ice Earth deck. Yeah, right. right yeah, it but it's, it's it, right. No, it's, it's yeah. It was a Taxes deck to beat Water. I wonder if the Wind version helps against Ice, and maybe that's the version. Maybe it's saying like, okay, we're gonna build this Taxes deck, but we're gonna like counter Ice with it. Also, pretty good against Mill, right? Like, pay three extra for your Phoenix or your Diablos right, seems pretty yeah. good. And whenever you have an odd costed summon, uh, casting on. Like against a board that has White Tiger Lassie, like that's rough because right, if yeah. you don't have the perfect backup setup or if you're, yeah, you can end up overpaying hard. Yeah, so. Yeah, and then. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, nobody wants to pay like six for like a glassy Lobolus or anything like that. So that's always <laughs> right. a tough one to get around. Yeah, so. How, we have some qualifications coming up here in Tampa. I think we have one in two weeks. I believe it's on the 14th. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, so it's not tomorrow, or not this Saturday, but the following, yeah. And so Zach will be grinding in that to qualify, and I am undecided yep. right now. My plan right now is to play in it um, and do my best to block Zach, uh, but we do have some sort of like discussion that we kind of want to open up. We, I put a, a post out on the fans page which had a surprising mm -hmm. number of comments. I, I estimated that, that some people would have very strong opinions and that we'd probably hit like 12 to 15 comments. <laughs> Instead, the last time I checked, it was 130 comments. Um, so the question is, is let's say from my perspective, I'm qualified to have three buys. Um, should I play in these qual qualifiers, these local qualifiers, where the prize is for first place you get qualified? If that was the only prize, I think it's very cut and dry whether I should play. Well, I'd obviously be wasting my time. However, you get a you have the the, the trophy with you, Cody. Oh uh, yeah. So you yeah. get the sweet trophy, <laughs> okay? Which it is a really awesome trophy. Um, you get. I got it. I got it. You get play mat. You get sleeves. Um, I have a little uh, poster man over there. <laughs> yeah. you, you get a ton of stuff for, for winning these things. And not only that, but yeah. the entries, like, I don't, so I think ours is like 25. What's your entry, Cody, for the entry yours? Maybe it's 20? Uh, the first one I went to is 20. Um, I think the one that I'm going to, it's actually on the same day as the one at Sunshine. Uh, it's going to be, I want to say it's only 15, actually. Okay. Right. So, for twenty dollars or fifteen dollars, you get like some pretty intense prizes. So I could play in it and, and win it. However, every oh, I, I was I would assume unless I get paired against Alfred, every single round I play in, I'm potentially eliminating someone from their chance to play in nationals. Now there are some arguments that that is fine because you're eliminating people that they if you know if they're good enough to make nationals, they will make nationals. There is that argument. Um, well, before we move on, what do you guys think about legitimacy? the legitimacy of that argument? Will the people who are qualified to make nationals make nationals? Um, not strictly, because there's just not enough spots. 
Like, I think there's enough players that could play solidly to make it and um, compete at a Nationals level Okay. Uh, that just don't have either the opportunity or whatever else. But, uh, I mean, I think it's still a fine argument, especially, like, I mean, obviously I'm in this spot. Like, <laughs> you both have qualified, uh, one through a locals, and then an additional Crystal Cup, and then Sam for winning the Crystal Cup. So, like... Yeah, I don't know. Being that person in that hot seat, like I don't want to ask anybody to like scoop to me or whatever, because like you don't want to have you don't want to be that guy. I think Akimoto was saying that in the post uh, yeah. that he could imagine if he was in that position, like he wouldn't ask anybody. And like I, I can get that. Like obviously in the back of my mind, I'm like everybody scoop, but <laughs> but like I want to earn it too. Like if 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 for some reason everybody as a collective decided we're all gonna scoop to Zach and Zach's gonna go for some reason that was the decision, I wouldn't feel good about that at all. Like I didn't earn it. So for me, I think even being in that spot that I could be kicked out by somebody like that, like I still feel like that's probably true is if I can't win an event or like get high enough to come in second place to you, then I probably don't deserve to go. And what are your your thoughts on that, Cody? Now you're qualified, so you have uh, a different mindset. However, you do have friends that aren't qualified. Right, yeah. I I think – I mean, being in the position, like when you're sitting across from somebody that, like, for instance, when me and Zach played, like I'm qualified, and this is top eight, and if I if he wins, he makes it. If I win, he doesn't make it. Like, it's definitely a rough spot to be in. Um, but I I think if like I'm friends with most of the people at my locals. I know you guys are friends with a lot of the guys at your locals. Right. Yeah. Um, I think if they're like true friends of you, quote unquote they're not going to ask you to like scoop. Like if you can see to them, like obviously they're going to appreciate it, but I don't think somebody that's truly your friend is just going to be like, Hey, scoop to me so I can make it or something like that. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a really fair, um, uh, an analysis. I, I'm just thinking that, you know, if, if I have to play against these people, but I had to pay money, then I, I think there should be some sort of understanding, you know, that like, does that does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, I think the ultimate solution here is take prizing out of qualifiers I, and make it just qualification. And that has been my that has been my solution all along. I think if the if the cost of the event was ten dollars to enter, right, and mm-hmm. then the store could take that into a collection for its time, energy, and money in running the event, then right. the stores would still want to run it. Um, mm-hmm. And players will pay ten dollars for the chance of qualification. I believe. I really do. the The counter argument is the pricing for, and I know people hate. Some people love. Some people hate when you compare to Magic, right? But the pricing compared to an RPTQ or a PTQ, or at least now the PPTQ and Magic, those things scale exponentially with the number of entrants. Right. Um, of course, it's a whole different system because you can't play in those if you've already qualified. But but that's the point. If those are also cash though right like the Some thing them, about it depends. final fantasy is most of the prizing is not monetary it's it's all stuff it's swag right you get plushies you get binders you get foils so signed stuff which which is all liquid but it's not paying for your hotel or paying for your travel or anything um, unless you do the legwork to actually sell it or something so i think that's also that might factor into the discussion as well yeah that's that's fair I, which is a lot of you know a lot of what we do when we travel to Kansas. You know, yeah, we, have we to, end up selling everything. We have to like end up moving like, everything that we that. won. Yeah, like sure. I would, I would love to have some of those things. I had to get rid of a trade or whatever. Um, but you know, it, it's just a pain to carry back on the plane. That being said, you know, obviously we don't have to deal with these with these local qualifiers. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I. So again, to to recap real quick, that was kind of like the what we thought about um, if a player is qualified, will they qualify? Um, that has, but there's, there's other, there's some other, there's some other new, uh, like small things about this too. Right. Um, if, if even, even if that's not the case, how do we know that? Like, like we have wave two coming up, right? Mm. How are you going to make plans? So wh- when is, when is, do we know when nationals is, uh, we do, I know it's not been released. Do we have a general, a general time frame, right? I think it's September. Okay. So. I heard I'll last little, week in September little, or early October is what I've okay. heard. So a lot of people are going to have to start making these these requests for time off, right? 
That's not a big thing, absolutely. Okay. And we haven't had a Wave 2 announcement yet. How much are you sweating this qualification, Zach? Th- this time. How much does this um, one matter to you? Well, for me, sweating it isn't going to help, so I don't sweat it. But I like that mentality. Um, I, I would be sweating it, but I like the, I like, like the no, I'm, mentality. Like, I'm, I'm, I'll be stressed in the moment, like, man, I want to win this, I want to win this, but it's there's no point in, like, you know, because uh, it's not going to help me like, get through it. So. All right. Um, but... I just thought of a hard. I just thought of a hard question. The human response would be, "I'm shaking." Like, okay. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Are you ready for it? Uh, probably. It's a tough question. Sure. Do you deserve to win it? That's a tough question, <laughs> right? Or, or, or uh, even if you don't right now, are you going to be deserving of the yes, win if you get it? But it okay. doesn't mean that other people don't deserve it. That's fair. So, I, oh, and like, by the way, just to clarify, I didn't mean that. Like, are you the most deserving? Right. Like, if, if you lose, was that unjustified? I meant, <laughs> I meant are you going to put in the work and effort it takes to win this? That's a hard question, I mean, right? I'd like to think yes. I mean, right. I don't know what that, you know, I don't know how to quantify that. The, as what I don't, the right yeah, there, of there's, probably, is. there's probably not a way to quantify it. And it's right. going to be reasonably difficult for for multiple reasons one you have to test a new format which you don't have access to at this very moment well i take that back thanks to the breakdown you do have access yeah, to it because right. as we're recording this the whole set has been spoiled um so you well, do have access first three elements but you don't have the cards in front of you you don't have them on octagon you have no real ways of testing you could print out a whole bunch of proxies and bring them to your lgs but that's such a pain and we're not all Chad Blankmanship, who's who's, yeah, right. go, who's gonna be he's gonna be bringing those proxies tomorrow to test with, I'm sure. Um, but there's that, and then you also still have to get those cards, even if you and test that... a deck, you have to be able to make sure you you're getting those cards, which means that you have to invest a certain amount of money into this. This I don't opus. know if you saw the quantity of boxes I'm buying, but uh... I did, I did, which is <laughs> which is nor which is exactly one more normal than you normally do, right? Yep, because two, I did it for Opus more, 5. Two more I, than you did last time, because you No, you no, actually, right? actually no, because last time I impulse bought an additional box, and it ended up being beneficial, so that's why I'm doing that many oh, okay. this time. So. Okay, yeah, for some reason I thought you ended up trading one of those boxes. I did, actually, yeah, you're right, I did. To, to me, yeah, so I ended up with another box. No, 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 Was I traded... I I'm pretty sure I you tra- do... you traded a no, box. No, no. Or something. What, hap- what happened was I traded a box to Alfred for two Gabranth promos. Okay, that's what happened. Uh, so, so that's so I finished my playset of Gabranth promos, okay. and then and you already I bought ordered you edition. a box. Yes, because you were giving me a bunch of foils. Right. Okay. That, that you were trying to get rid of, and you couldn't get a box, so I bought you a box for okay. just a yeah. big pile of foils. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, so you ended up a little bit shorter. Now you're going on the other end. You're buying extra so that you have the yeah. stuff that you need. Um, when this when this rolls around yes because i want to guarantee whatever i want to play i have the cards for it because right. as long as the boxes are from the same case which they should be um i should be able to get a place out of everything or at least be only a couple of legends off all right so yeah i didn't mean to put you in the hot seat there it's just, it's just an interesting question um, yeah i mean the i think the 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 way to phrase it too is deserving to win yes mm-hmm. most deserving to win maybe not we'll see if i win Right. Like that's that's kind of thing, right? Because uh, there's people like Andy Carmona showing up, and he's you know, <laughs> he's no slouch. So yeah, um, yeah, it's it's hard to say most deserving to win. I mean, I was lucky enough to win Kansas. I have zero doubts that I was not the most deserving person to win Kansas. Um, mostly, I would you know if if I had played my deck that I had tested and built for so long i mean i'm telling you i played hundreds of matches of octagon for this event hundreds Mm -hmm. um and the part that makes me undeserving is then i abandoned that deck (laughs) it switched decks to the last second so i know that there's people who they tried so hard to like break the format right um, and they brought these really cool rogue decks a lot of like the ones we saw in socal which we we should probably go back and talk about that at some point the the ex burst decks because we saw more than one um right and and so, josh is in the finals of the octagon tournament with it right although yeah it, it only means that he I, I think are they playing best two of three they are right yes so they're playing best two of three so he won his quarterfinals and his semifinals yep. and now he's down to the finals yeah so and he, he was won four matches. Me the whole time he's like oh game one down easy it's <laughs> like game game two <laughs> and yeah. then next day right so 
that's just a really cool deck. And I know like those people are really deserving. I know that like if you take a look at our local group, you have Chad and James, who are the number one front runners that you know. Although you got to worry about Andy, I would be much more concerned about Chad and James. And I'm not exaggerating. Mm-hmm. Those two people are putting so much like heart into the set and so much like testing. Like I, I have like three messages I need to get back to James about about different deck lists that he's trying. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're really putting their heart into this. So it, it is really kind of cool. Um, and it is showing that this qualification process is working. Uh, yeah. As far as like incentive, because we these local guys they want to qualify. You right. know, what's Jamal been saying this whole time? Oh, I'm going to qualify. It's it's mine. I'm going to win it. You know? Yeah. So, I don't know. That that to me is, like, super interesting. Um, What, Cody, so let's say, let, let's let's talk about a little bit more in depth. Let's say you get paired against, uh, let's say you get paired against your best friend. Easy scoop, hard scoop. No scoop. Which one is it? Uh. Um. When am I getting paired? Like, am I Swiss. like Swiss? Round one? Swiss zero round or zero losses, round one. Let's say round one. I think that's an easy scoop. Okay. Um, I think if it's if it's I'm against like my best friend, uh, I think it's an easy scoop. Um, but I'm gonna try to. I mean, everybody in the like a lot of our locals they'll know like oh he's gonna scoop to him. But right, it's, it's kind of expected. And I mean that's the uncomfortable situation. Right, um, right, because you're no. going to be friends with a lot of your locals, right? Right. Oh yeah. And so you and, and you can't scoop to all of them because there would be no point in playing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is you know something I I think the the answer that I go into this qualification with on next Saturday is is saying like listen, I'm here to play. I I paid money to get here. Right. There are two ti- there are only two times I'm going to scoop. I'm going to scoop if. Zach and I meet at X and 1, okay, and so that it knocks him out, I'm going to scoop then, or if I meet Zach in the top cut, that's it, and it's no harm intended because I'm friends with James, I'm friends with Chad, I'm friends with all these people, but the bottom line is, is that like, if I'm going to play, I'm playing for two reasons, I'm playing because there's a high price pool, and I have a friend who's trying to qualify, um, and by scooping to anyone else, I hurt Zach's chances, period, I mean, that's fact, right? Right. Right. No matter what, if I scoop to anyone else, I'm hurting uh, my teammates' chance at getting into and getting qualified for Nats. And at the bottom line is, look, as selfish as it seems, like I need my teammates to qualify for Nats. Like it will be beneficial for this podcast group if Nick can qualify for Nats. Right. So I mean, that's just the bottom line. Look, you know, and, and, and Zach's probably here for the first time. If I if I play Zach round one, Zach, I think we're just going to play it out. You know, I think that. You're you're a good enough player to where you have, don't have to stress it, and you'll either beat me or you won't, and we'll play it on. If we meet at X and one, consider it yours. And I think that's a, I think that's a fair way of going about it. I don't know if you've thought about that at all, Cody, or not. But what are yeah, your thoughts think, on that specifically? I think regardless of like if I play my best friend, uh, 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 that's an instant scoop for me. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I will say I'll be like, okay, if you go on the top four, then I want the chocobo sleeves that you get. For top four. <laughs> I gotta get something. Like. So I think that that's also <laughs> kind of implied. <laughs> yes. So if you guys have, if you guys come from, I, I know you don't come from a magic background, but but Zach does. And magic, it's it's very implied um, because you have to in magic, you have to be very careful with your diction um, when these types of things happen. Um, you say the wrong word in a sentence, and you can get disqualified. So in magic, generally speaking. Let's say you're going into you're you're the finals of a GP, and this this happens with strangers even. You're the finals of the GP, and you play against someone you don't know. Win winner gets in, losers out. What ha- what generally happens is if you go to time and it's going to be a draw, one person will concede to the other, and there's this implied situation that that person will then split whatever they win. That seems obvious, right? That is that seems fair. Of course, mm-hmm. it doesn't always happen, um, and there's no way to ensure that it does. It's a, that's an interesting game theory study. <laughs> right? Right. Um, but I've seen it work out multiple times with friends of mine with complete strangers. Because mm-hmm. um, when I, you win a GP, where does that put you after that? I forget. 
Well, if you win the GP, it puts you in the Pro Tour. But I think I think pro now tour, the right, top okay. eight actually. I think the top eight now makes Pro Tour. Okay. Yeah, the Pro right. Tours seem huge. Right. Yeah. But even for like day two, maybe like some like at one point, if you go to time and one year's not getting in, then the other one should scoop. And Final Fantasy, obviously that that that's a little bit different because of the way like the top cut works. You, but if if you're going to time, no matter what, someone needs to scoop. It is insane to me when someone says we took a double loss. The only times I typically do that are <laughs> a if you know don't have a good relationship with somebody, but also uh, and they're not scooping. Also, yep. if people really slow play a lot during the game, <clears throat> like okay, that's fair. And the game could have been finished. It really frustrates me, and I won't scoop. That's that. Th- those are fair because arguments. they need to learn to go faster. But obviously, that's, that's maybe taking too like putting myself too much on a high pedestal, maybe. But like that's that's the only other situation where. Uh, that's fair and by scooping to them you're actually encouraging the slow play right because they and whether or not they're aware of it though is a problem like so if they're not aware that that's why then i might just look like a jerk but like yeah sometimes there's ever a mention during the game i try to usually give subtle clues like ask about how much time left stuff like that so they kind of get the idea that we need to speed up but same yeah look at the clock twice ask how many how much time is left twice say we need to speak we need to play faster the problem with that by the way is as ever saying we need to make sure we're you can say it as nice as you want. My 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 exact language usually is we need to make sure that we're both playing at a reasonable rate because we don't have very much time left. What, mm-hmm. what happens every single time is my opponent will say one of two things. You're playing just as slowly. Sure, maybe. <laughs> but I'm just saying we need to play faster. Or two, they'll, they'll look at the clock and say we have plenty of time. Don't worry about it. In the second <laughs> scenario, I think we've always gone to time. <laughs> Because anytime someone says that, they literally have no concept of we need to like be somewhat aware yeah. of the time, which is, I don't know, baffling to me. But yeah. yeah. So what? So let's talk real quick before we close up. I know it's not on the agenda, um, but I would like to discuss real quick decks moving into Opus Six. Um, I think right now is the only safe time. Now that we've kind of we've kind of. Look, I'm hoping that Zach qualifies in two weeks. If he does, we've kind of formed what I think to be one of the best uh, qualified groups of players um, that are going to be playing in an A. So you can expect us to be a little bit tight-lipped about our deck lists from here <laughs> out. That being well. said, right now <clears throat> is kind of up in the air. Let's talk about it. In the open, for maybe the final time, what is the <laughs> absolute best decks you could play right now? We'll start with you, Zach. Uh, best decks going into Opus 6, like with Opus 6 cards? Yes. Or... Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think Science is going to be a real contender. Uh, I think Ishtola, after playing the deck a couple times, uh, Locals, before you showed up, actually, um, I was playing with Ian. And uh, it's kind of insane. Uh, Ida is a broken card with Papalamo on the field. Right. Uh, little pop, the little Papa is what I call. Like, yeah, pop, <laughs> Poppy <laughs> with yeah. uh, Ida and Wall is just insane. Yeah. Um. So I think the addition of Ishtola and maybe a couple other cards. I I haven't really fully looked at anything, but Ishtola just by herself makes it seem insane. Uh. I think monsters will continue to be a thing. It's just a matter of if they move more towards summons, if they go to different monsters, or if they change, if they want to be like more like the mill deck, but in the other colors, like kind of the same, like a more summon version instead of like a Uranger, Layak, Com, Commonod, Diablos build. Um, and then also, I think an all summons deck is going to be a thing, and okay. got to crack that code. But it's going to be <laughs> there's all, something all summons, there. Yeah. Cool, yeah. cool. What about you, Cody? Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm feeling confident about ice moving forward, sure, uh, especially yeah. with the new Renoa today that we got. Sure. Uh, yeah, the new Renoa, if you guys don't know, is a four CP ice card that's it's a seven K, and when it enters the field, you basically you blink. If you're from Magic, you blink a another forward, which is... You well, you remove... flicker it. Yeah, yeah you... well, that's what blink does, right? You remove well, it and it comes is, back. Yeah, is one spot. Blink is when it goes away, comes back, end of turn. No, that's not true. Um, no? No, because the, 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 the lingo came from the card Momentary Blink. Okay. Which was originally a I've flashback card. Yeah, which was a huh. flashback card um, back from... Oh, no, I know that card, yeah. Okay, yeah. It reprinted also, uh, I think in Time Spiral, maybe. Um but yeah, so you blink a forward. Um, so this includes forwards like uh, Domiturge. I mean, that that's got to be the worst. <laughs> that's got to be the worst CP value you can get out of it, and it's still pretty good, 
right? Yeah. You can blink things like Genesis, um, Al Cid. Um, you can blink things during combat if you have Devout. Right. Um, there's just a whole bunch of things. Are there any Fords that when they co- oh Cognazzo would be an example? I was like if, 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 during combat if you could blink a Cognazzo with a Devout if you like set on something like Water Ice. Uh, it would be that great because you're on you're on ice and you have a devout and a, you just broke a backup, so you don't Barbarisha. have that many forwards. Oh, Barbarisha is an interesting one. Blinking Barbarisha seems pretty pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, you can't make a safe block at that point if there's a Barbarisha on the field and they swing in with anything else with an open devout. Sure, yeah, and we we already have that situation, right? We already have a deck that could play Gipple with devout and it presents the same situation, uh, right. but Renoa is just much more versatile than Gipple mm-hmm. is. Um, and just does a lot more, a lot cuter things. If you're playing Ice Wind, for example, you would have the old Zidane. We wouldn't even talk about the new Zidane, but if you could have the old <laughs> Zidane, you could just blink the Zidane and take a card from their hand. Yeah. Um, there are there are situations where you might play her, blink blink something. She dies in combat, or you, you trade with you Hecaton and trade with something, and then you devout her back in and blink something else not to mention she also works with gipple right if you play some sort of ice earth deck you can just gipple her in mm-hmm. yeah i could i could see ice being super strong with her wait, Are there any gipple, other... wait gipple her in what do you say you could you could gipple with 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 Renoa. oh okay yeah to, like, yeah and... are there any oh. other ice cards that you think you'd play cody uh even with the Renoa being released i don't know I, I still got to figure out how I can make room for that. Um, right, that's, that's I think a good ice, point. Even as it is, I could take that like current Opus Five Ice deck list into an Opus Six meta and still, I think, come out on top of most matches just because the discarding is such a heavy like obstacle for somebody to get over. So, have that's you a, seen all the ice cards point. now, or have you not seen? Them I all have. Yet? I have not. But um, from what I've seen, I mean, I think it's it's already such a tight deck list. Like you either go full turbo discard or mm-hmm. you try to play like. A lot more of the six package, or right? Like more mid range. I've uh, I have a couple of specific ones I was gonna ask about. It would be the two CP squall, the one that if they have two cards or less in hand, he gets haste and first strike. Uh, and if they have no cards, he's in eight K with haste first strike for two. Yeah. Oh, See, actually, I, I like I like that card, but I don't think I can make room for it. But I think it'll be a nice like, it'll only almost be like how like I didn't play Mateus, but my opponents were always like, oh man, if what if he has Mateus? Like right. I could bluff that. Yeah, they might not attack. The haste, they might would... they might not attack with like their last two forwards because they're like, well, what if he top decks a squall and like a devouts in a genesis or something? Yeah, right. And so, um, okay, yeah, I was gonna add one more, but okay, no, go ahead. What's what's one more? Say, uh, Borgen. It's a one CP three K. When it goes from the field to the break zone, they discard a card. So it's like a de- it's delayed, and you don't have it's, as much. It's Viking. To the discard, it's a reverse Viking. But... Yeah. Okay. He said it's a one CP. One CP three K. I had not seen that card. That's that's interesting. I'll have to, we'll talk about that at another time. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, but no. Uh, you can also Sid Austin uh, from Renoa, by the way. Oh geez. So you play your Sid, right? And then they don't mind going to no cards in hand because you already have a Sid on the board. And lo and behold, yeah. here comes another Sid off the top of your deck in the form of a four CP seven K. Not to mention, <laughs> obviously. You can attack with your Sid and then blink him, kill their guy, and leave him back as if he had Brave. Wait, so does... Uh, no, they, they does come back dull? dull. Okay, they come back dull. They okay, that's, dull. that was my next question because it's very unlike Ice to let them come in not dull. Right. And she she can't choose any forward, right? It's not just an Ice forward? Correct. Oh, I can double check for I'm, you. I'm, but yeah, I'm, I'm 100% I'm, sure yeah, that it's yeah. nuts. Okay, yeah. I don't want to keep... I don't want us to go and say Al Sid and all this stuff if we can't actually do it. Um... <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can do it. You can also do Genesis Avatar, for example. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is a a unique interest, a, a unique use of her because you could play. What you could do is you could play the Genesis Avatar onto the field and then devout in the Renoa. Maybe you right. didn't have it already, so you devout it in. Right. That seems really good to me. And then speaking of Alcid, uh, talking about Opus Six, I think Mono Lightning's. Definitely going to be a big threat right out right out the gate. Um, mm-hmm. You have the new dragoon. Yeah, the new. I don't know how to pronounce it, but the new dragoon is something else. Estinian, <laughs> yeah. Estinian yeah. is okay. is it the? I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask this question. Uh, it's open. Is it in the front runner for best card in the set for you guys so Stinian? far? 
Yeah. Um, I don't know that it could be the best card when Zidane exists. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to Zidane. Zidane. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, should we should we just skip it then? Because Zidane is clearly what we're more excited about. Well, I think Estinian is amazing. Like, I love the card. I yeah. just think Zidane enables very broken interactions, and I think it will. It might not necessarily be better in the decks, but I think as a card individually, maybe it's better. So sure, like yeah. maybe Astinian should be up there because I think he's he's more universal, but Zidane yeah. I think has a higher ceiling for what it can do. Right. So if so for those that don't know, Zidane has already been spoiled. Um, it is a seven K four CP win forward, and it cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities. No, it's... I think it's just abilities, right? Uh, I'm going off the top of my head, so I could be wrong. Okay, is, I'll it, is it just abilities? Um, I'll keep going. Um, the other thing is that it can't be blocked by three or higher, or is that? Or am I uh, mixing no, it up with? No, I'm mixing no, it up no. with another card. Yeah. So sorry. I have it in front of me. If you want me to read it yeah, off. Yeah, go ahead. Read it off. So it's a four CP wind, seven uh, K, uh, obviously nine genome legend. Uh, so it, it cannot be chosen by your opponent's abilities. So okay, so can, some as you can. Or, okay. Yes. Uh, when your opponent discards a card from his or her hand due to your summoner ability. You choose a character, or sorry, a wind character, and activate it. So that's an okay. errata that you guys have to be aware of, because um, it sure. says one character, and that would be insane. <laughs> uh, infinite Gasper. But uh, you activate a wind character, and then whenever he attacks, you get to look at their hand and take a forward from their hand, and then that counts as a discard for him to activate something. And that's when he attacks, not when he deals damage. Right. So. They can't really respond with much. I mean, they can respond, but then you're going to take whatever card there's they have out of their hand. If they have a Layak on the board, their Layak is going to resolve after the Zidane trigger. Or the, Zidane, the, the Layak trigger is going to go on the stack after the Zidane trigger. So Layak will resolve beforehand, yeah, so and you you'll actually get to take that card, or assuming yes. it's a forward, or at least see it um, going forward. That card seems good to me. Um, and not just good, obviously, but... In the sense that it's another forward like Estrola that is immune to Al Cid. Yes. Are they doing this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it's within Zidane's realm, right, to be untargetable. Like, his very first legend card, Opus 1, can't be chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities. Yeah. So he kind of has that evasive nature in his cards kind of built in. Because we do see recurring themes with the same characters across cards, which is nice, uh, but also kind of justifies it. And he's also had two different cards that discard. So it's like it's like you took a little aspect from all of his previous iterations and put them all on this card and then yeah. added a third ability. Yeah, what do you think about it, Cody? Uh, I think that's I think the card's incredible. Uh, that that's probably be the first card I start testing with uh, out like outside of ice. I mean, is it uh, enough to make you into wind ice? Like you want to just start splashing wind in for a couple cards and this oh, obviously he synergizes when you ha when your opponents are discarding, um, but oh, only yeah. with the wind characters. Right, that's true. Right, and we and I mean, there's a lot. Obviously, wind ice did wind ice discard basically what a top two nats last year, so yeah. it was already a deck. So I think it's just gonna. I think it'll see a big comeback. Um, so. Yeah. I could definitely see myself splashing wind in my ice stick. Interesting. <clears throat> um, are there any other cards that before we start, you know, really testing this set, you think um, are underrated right now? <laughs> Goblin. <laughs> okay. I see nothing good about Goblin yet, but I think it looks pretty sweet. Okay. That is a 2 CP fire monster that for an activation cost of zero uh, becomes a 5k until end of turn that whenever it attacks, you deal 1,000 damage to a forward. And it's a forward, so it can be yours or your opponent's. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think the Doom Train, the new Doom Train, I think that's a little underrated. I've heard some people just kind of like, uh, it's not good enough to fit nice this card. But I think, it's, I think it's a pretty good card. I'm always looking for another way to get rid of Dataluma, so... <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah, any other way. I think that Paul is my number one card for, like, probably underrated. <laughs> I think that a lot of times... If you can build a deck that um, is good at removing stuff, then and and you might go to uh, deck out, Paul is insane. If you hit one time with Paul, that is <laughs> six cards. 
Six cards is a lot of cards. Yeah, so Paul's a 2 CP 4K, mm -hmm. uh, Opus, or a uh, Category 2 uh, Thief. Uh, when he hits, when he deals damage to your opponent, they mill five. Right. So and he can't. Not only do they flip a can't card be of blocked, damage, right? By three or four. Yeah, I was getting there, and it can't be blocked by four. It costs three or more, so you have to block him with a two CP or less. And if you can't, do you, you know how Cobaldroy just ruins run wins games because you can't block him? That's yeah. this guy. It's now, the obviously, same, yeah, obviously same. this guy's a little bit more vulnerable to removal. Mm -hmm. Um. However, when he hits you, you've now lost six cards from your deck, and good luck. You know, that, by the time he's swinging, like, if he ever you hits have, you twice, I like don't six to seven cards opener, right? So you're down to like what 40, 44, 43 yeah. cards. Yeah. Then say you play him turn one, even right? Yeah, yeah, sure. I I'd play, uh, I'd play this bet. guy on turn Put one. Down. They have to and respond. Then, yeah, and then if they don't kill him and they take a hit on turn two, they've now drawn like about nine cards minus six more. That's fifteen cards out of your deck on like the second turn. Yeah, and that's obviously you know the nut if you draw it and play it turn one and they don't remove it. Yeah, but like also if they remove it, how good does that feel? Like, yeah, yeah, spending resources on the first few turns to get rid of a two CP four K. I would have to. I would have to look into what the best ways to remove it um, is. I'll sit into Alua or I'll sit into Hildebrand. Right. Everything else right. feels good, right? Everything what if you else play Fire good. Wind, turn one, haste him, hit you, mill five, go, take your first turn. <laughs> that's, that's true, and then you can't actually outsit him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. It's, so that, a, it's a very significant mill. Yeah, like he's going a from. Oh, sorry. He is wind. Oh, wind of course. Card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't hear that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, well, like all the previous effects, they've they've set kind of a precedent of one card if if you're choosing to mill them two cards if it's either a special or your something of yours is breaking yeah it's been kind of the trend so for something to be not only are you hitting them and getting benefit but it's also five cards that's a huge jump in mill power yeah yeah uh, and that that's what's just blowing me away it's like the number of cards you the number of times i count mm -hmm. my opponent's deck and they have 12 cards is actually <laughs> just like the magical number you hit with this guy that's exactly 12 cards if you hit twice, is what I'm saying. Right. That's to me. That's just like, that's really great. Um, th of course, we we'll have to find the right deck for him. And can that deck, you know, how how big was he? He was a four K. Four K. So can that can he deal with if if your opponent if you play that guy turn one and your opponent just goes Thalber turns turn one, you discard a card, play Argath, you discard a card. My guy's a five K, and can mm -hmm. can block your guy. You know? He also dies to Dataluma if you don't have like Maria or something. Oh, he just dies to Dataluma. Like even if you have Maria, because there's no way that deck doesn't have other ways to ping him. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah, Dataluma. The like, card does not want to see Dataluma, right? Interesting <laughs> enough, how many cards did Dataluma get? We know we got Goblin. Mm -hmm. As a possible, yeah. Right. right. Um, if, if, if you're interested in playing Fire Earth, Goblin's a you, possibility. You could say indirectly it got Mog Eleven and Choco Mog because that whole tutor package. Uh, Kind of slots in with Star Sybil yeah. already, which is where Dadaluma wants to be. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we've seen specifically. Isn't there, isn't there the Legend Maria, the new one? Oh, Doesn't yeah. she ping? She does ping. Now, uh, she gives she a power buff. Two she gives a power buff to Category Two characters, also, right? I believe so. I have to okay, look, so look it up. so the new Paul guy, you said he's from Category Two, so we can technically buff him. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. So Maria's a, the 2 CP 5k wind. Uh, she has three abilities. Uh, she's kind of a planeswalker. <laughs> Choose a category 2 forward. Other than herself, it gains 2k. Uh, Dancer their board, so 1k to everything. Or choose a forward, and during this turn, the next damage dealt to it's reduced by 3,000. That's interesting, yeah. Does it... So you actually well, can't pick your own, so that doesn't that doesn't hit Dataluma. Interesting enough, though, does that win, like, the Dataluma race I, how does it work so if you ping their guy and then they ping your guy right for the down luma triggers sure and then you choose to kill theirs they can't they can only choose yours one more time and then you what, can Dada reduce luma? you could reduce down luma versus Dada luma uh no Dada luma always die because it's 8k per ping because you're being being targeted and taking damage so you could ping it one time you could you could ping theirs one time right to deal four four and then they're gonna 8k you then you're gonna 8k them okay so you have to be the person on the receiving end well, so, no, because then, then if yours was still alive after that initial 8K, they're going to 8K you again. 
So, hold so on. one is if, taking sixteen thousand, okay. one's taking twelve thousand. Okay, so there's no okay, so there's no way to actually save it with Maria. No. Not unless he's already bigger from like an Anacro and a Maria and maybe which another effect. Which we yeah. can't have two Marias. Right. <laughs> so okay. All right. I just want to see if there's a way to like kind of like boost down Luma some way. Mm. Interesting. All right. Well, I think that about rounds rounds it out then, right, for us? I think so. So um thank you guys for joining us in the stream. Uh we were super blessed to have both Cody and uh, Nicholas Nell join us um, mm -hmm. on the Choker Bros. Nicholas couldn't record tonight. Um, we did record last night. Uh, I made some bad decisions and accidentally messed it up. So <laughs> we re-recorded and Nicholas wasn't available. So I apologize. Uh, I apologize. Uh, you guys will get your fill of mono fire shenanigans. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to actually ask Nicholas to probably do something with mono fire. Um, mm -hmm. because I just, I want to see what his thoughts are going in. Maybe he can work with our, our new sponsor, Cards of Evilies, uh, owner, James Lockwood. They're both mono fire fanatics. Um, it'd be really cool to see what they could come up with. And then maybe next week or depending on when Oct it's released in Octagon, I would like to see us do some Octagon battles. Um, so yep. you guys should definitely be tuning in for that. Um, as always, all you gotta do is click the subscribe button down at the bottom. Um, it does nothing for us. We're not set up to receive money uh that's why you see no no ads during this video um we just like to know who's listening uh or at least know right. the number of people that are listening to us um if you see us at events please come up and say hi if you don't like something if there's something we we said that you disagree with please leave it in the comments or feel free to private message us either way is 100 percent fine mm -hmm. um yeah so we're just super happy um anyway that'll be it for episode 20 um i have something kind of special planned that these guys don't know about for episode 21 uh, so, so not only was there something special for 20 with two new people, there's also something special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it'll be a game. It'll be a game. It'll be a, it'll be a Cody uh -huh, versus... Another one of these? No, it'll oh. be Cody versus Nick, though. It'll be Cody versus Nick. So oh, you're okay. exempt from this one. But it'll, oh, be, okay. it'll be fun. It'll be exciting. I just didn't have time to set it up for this one. Um, <laughs> but anyway, thanks for joining us, guys. I'm Sam Riley. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snyder, guys. And we'll catch you guys later.